Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm completely training by myself today, doing a full solo session. So I thought I'd show you all the drills that I'm gonna be doing throughout today's session. So you can take some of these drills and use them in your own sessions as well. So my sessions are usually around 90 minutes long and they incorporate multiple areas because that's reflection of the game. So I'm gonna go for 90 minutes. I'll walk through each drill, explain what I'm doing, how to set it up, and maybe some adaptations if you don't have the equipment that I'm using, but it should be a really good session. So let's get right into it. So as you guys know by now, I always begin my training sessions with a thorough 10 minute warm up, just getting lots of dynamic stretches and movements in, preparing my body for the training session ahead. I always say this every time, but I'm always gonna repeat myself because it is that important. Your warm up is especially important, not only to boost performance, you will actually get more out of your training session if you get a good warm up in, but it will also prevent injury. And on that note, if you missed it, I did actually do a full injury prevention workout a week or so ago, and I would recommend checking that one out. Injury prevention work is so important and often overlooked. I'm gonna put a link on the screen right now if you wanna go over and check that out. But in addition to your injury prevention work, warming up before your sessions before your matches is going to massively reduce the risk of injury as you can see here going through lots of different movements getting some stretches in there as well really getting some blood in there so they're nice and prepared then I always try and get some muscle activation work in as well before my training sessions. Again, it's a great way to prepare those muscles because you're activating more fibers, firing up the body so that all those fibers are working together. And the more fibers that are activated, the more explosive you're gonna be. So obviously I'm using the resistance band here, but if you wait a second, I'm just gonna show you a couple of variations which you can actually use without the band to still activate more of those muscle fibers. But muscle activation is really important because it activates those harder to reach muscles muscle fibers that don't often get activated during your general warm-up and if they aren't activated some of your other muscle groups have to overcompensate for them and that's a quick way to get an injury. So as you can see here I'm just showing you a few variations of how you can activate some of your muscle fibers just by doing bodyweight exercises. You don't need the resistance band at all from these and in these few exercises you can activate the hamstrings, you can activate the glutes, the hips and the hip flexors as well which are all those small areas that are quite difficult to warm up in your general warm-up sessions. So here's just a single leg variation as well to really target each glute, making sure as many of those muscle fibers are activated as possible. And you'll notice a huge increase in your performance in your training sessions as well, if you fire up more of the muscle fibers in your body. So here's a hip flexor variation as well. So I'm just adding some resistance with my hand to really activate the little muscles in those hip flexors as well. So now just moving into some more explosive work. So a bit of quick feet movement and hopping over the hurdle, landing on one foot at a time and driving one knee up. So really stimulating those hip flexors. And we like to land on one leg at a time to really work on the balance and stability of those legs. It's really gonna help you with your injury prevention, strengthening up those stability muscles around the ankles, the knees and the hips, which are areas very susceptible to injury. So if you can strengthen up the muscles around, it takes the pressure off the joints themselves and allows the impact to go more through the muscle groups. So these are really good variations going through one leg at a time as well, especially around that knee joint. These are excellent for building stability around the knee. There's a lot of ACL injuries, MCL injuries that can keep footballers out for a very long time and very difficult to recover from. So you'll benefit a lot from these exercises. Then just moving into some quick feet movements as well, just getting around those cones and hurdles, trying to get as many steps in there as possible. So really firing up all those muscle fibers. Your legs are gonna really burn if you do a few reps of this one, but this is gonna really prepare you nicely for the training session ahead. Then I went into some more explosive work, isolating each leg at a time. So hopping over the hurdles and to the side, again, working on that balance and stability, a good injury prevention exercise, but really working on that explosiveness of each leg. So as you can see, as I land on that final leg, I'm just holding for a second. So I'm getting really stable, then pushing off. So it's a large stride at first, then moving into some quicker steps. So really explode out of it and then move into your acceleration. This is really gonna stimulate those muscle fibers. If you do these often you're going to find yourself a lot quicker really important to get that acceleration nice and explosive that first step is often the determination on whether you get to the ball first then I moved into some ball mastery work and you guys know I'm a huge fan of ball mastery. It really improves your confidence and close control with the ball. And I'm just using the hurdle for a different variation, just dragging the ball towards me and then with the outside of my foot, flicking it through the hurdle and collecting it on the other side and repeating with both feet. 
If you don't have a hurdle, you can do two cones, place them down and just play the ball between them. But if you want to see a full ball mastery training program, I created one myself called Maestro. I'll put a link on the screen right now, which will take you to day one, which is completely free for all my subscribers. So go and check that one out. I do recommend doing ball mastery as often as possible. You're going to see a huge improvement with the ball at your feet. Then I moved into a second variation, this time using the sole only. So rolling the ball underneath that hurdle. Again, if you have the cones, you can just roll the ball between the cones. Then taking one touch with the sole of my foot, hopping for a second, and then rolling back in the opposite direction. So we're getting an equal amount of reps on both feet. This is a really good one to get in a rhythm with. As you can see, as I'm touching the ball, my opposite foot is always hopping. So a good leg burner as well. Then I moved into a couple of speed dribbling drills, and both of these were taken from my Magnetico training program. Again, I've put day one for free for all of my subscribers on my channel. I'm going to put a link on the screen right now, but it really develops close control with the ball at speed. So those who completed Maestro and completed Magnetico, you'll know the difference. Maestro is all about ball mastery using all the different surfaces of the foot. And then Magnetico is all about traveling with the ball at speed while keeping it super glued to your body. So you notice as I go through these courses, I'm trying to take a touch of the ball with every step. That makes it far easier to manipulate so you can change direction at any sudden moment. So if a defender sticks his foot in, you've got full control of that ball. You can get away, evade them and continue on at speed. So then the second variation of this drill, I just put the two cones diagonally this time. So just going at more of an angle, having to go close around those corners. So having to speed up and slow down, which are two key areas to successful speed dribbling. Not only having the ability to keep the ball super glued to your foot, but if you can slow down and speed up whenever you want, you're going to be far more unpredictable and difficult to defend against. So just went through each of these drills five times each through, and that was a good workout. So just going around the course, down to the bottom gate there, getting around that cone, all the way back up to the top, and then stopping the ball on the line. Then my final drill of the day was a more position specific one. So as you can see, I'm out here on the left wing. That's my position. So I'm just kicking the ball up in the air, getting my first touch down, dribbling the ball, knocking it through both hurdles, then cutting inside at the final cone and then finishing into the far bottom corner. So just working on a few different technical elements, just adding some intensity to it as well. And it's good to practice drills in your position. Get familiar with the area of the pitch that you will find yourself in most often you're going to see this translate really nicely into the game so obviously these aren't actual defenders but just working on the accuracy of my touches when dribbling at speed it's not as easy as it looks but if you don't have these hurdles you can put two cones down but the hurdles do add that extra challenge because not only do you need to get it through the two sides but underneath that bar going across as well as you can see i hit it there which is an easy thing to do if you don't put it through perfectly smooth along the ground so working on the accuracy of that touch just working on a few different moves as well, then exploding with the ball, working on that close control at the same time. So a little bit of Magnetico style dribbling and then trying to keep the ball close to that final cone, throwing in a little bit of a body feint, cutting to the inside, or you could cut to the outside if you want to add a crossing variation as well. So you can do these drills and adapt it however you want. But I do always like to finish my training sessions with some kind of technical component that relates to situations I will find myself in during a match. So I went through this drill 10 times in total. Then my rest period, as you'll see right now, is just collecting the ball out of the net. Then once I get the ball, I just jog back to the start with it and then repeat 10 times. So it's a good bit of fitness work in there as well if you're doing these continuously, but that's how I like to do it. If you need a little bit of extra rest, take as much as you need because you want to be attacking each repetition of this drill with as much quality as possible. You want to be accurate with your touches, so if you need a bit of a breather to get that composure back, make sure you take it. All right, guys, really good session there. I'm not done training. I'm actually going up to the gym. I'm going to get on the treadmill. I kind of created a treadmill workout as interval training, very football specific fitness work, but it's quite a long session. So I'm actually going to do that in a separate video. So I'm going to show you that entire thing. But that's going to be the fitness cardio element of my training today. So as you can see, just trying to involve all the different elements, some agility, some explosiveness, some dribbling, some power, and a bunch of technical work on top of it too. So that's what I like to do, about 90 minutes of work. The treadmill session itself is 10 minutes but it's very intense but as I said I'm going to put that in a separate video because I'm going to show you the full 10 minutes and I'll also show you a way you can do it without a treadmill so you can do it outside as well but really good fitness work so I'm going to get up there but if you enjoyed today's video make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos and I will see you guys in the next video